Today, I'm going to talk to you about, I, you know, I get this question all the time, you know, which is better, gold or silver during a reset? And personally, I own both, but I own them for different reasons. We have a real-time example to show you today. So let's just jump right in. Because the big question that the governments and central banks want you to believe is that by taking on more debt, that's solving a too much debt problem. Well, it can only look like that for a certain period of time. And in Egypt, well, you know, they're having a lot of economic crisis right now, just like a number of other countries are because the period of hyperinflation and overnight resets that's begun. And you might say, well, that's over there and we're over here. Guess what? Coming to a theater near you, this isn't just a one-off issue. Just like they want you to think about the banks that are failing now. Oh, that's just a one-off. That's just a one. It is until it's not. And the reality is, is the foundation of the global, the entire global financial system is crumbling. But let's use Egypt as an example. So the IMF and the UAE swoop in to ease Egypt's economic crisis. Well, there is a saying that if I owe you $100,000, I have a problem. But if I owe you a million dollars, you have a problem. I think that's true here too. But it also does pertain to who's in control. Cairo's main lender and top golf donor have come to the rescue once again, offering major loans, huh, okay, investments and central bank transfers that could halt the country's latest slide despite short-term consumer pain. Eh, who cares about the consumer? They're just supposed to be taking care of the entire global economy now, right? 60% of the 105 million population is estimated to be below or close to the poverty, poverty line. And what we've seen through much, much study, because there's lots of examples of this, typically on average, 80% of the population ends up in abject poverty. Well, we've been watching a slow erosion of the middle class since 2000. This will speed up, and we've already witnessed that, right? The price of gold was dropping fast on news that Egypt might have found a lifeline to save it from what had, until then, looked like looming financial ruin. I mean to tell you, you can't make this stuff up. It's ridiculous. Solving you know, that would be like solving a fire by adding more gasoline to the fire because that's going to extinguish it. No, it's not. What extinguishes it is this. And let me show you. Don't take my word for anything. Do your own due diligence. That's why I put the links below and I encourage that because we know what a desperate governments do. And this sets up our opportunity. They sell income producing assets and they add debt. Look around locally, see what you like to own. But we'll, that's another topic for another day. But what is Egypt doing? Devaluation, overnight devaluation, and record rate hike to put IMF deal in reach. Well, whew, because if they can take on more debt, I mean, it kind of feels like it. If you are you know, you're having trouble paying your credit card bill, but they'll still give you a new credit card and you can transfer your balance. Does that really solve your problem? Because what are you most likely to do? Most likely you're going to fill up that new card too. Well, governments are no different. Governments, corporations, individuals, it all works the same. And you can take from one to, to determine what's the most likely outcome. But proceeds from the UAE investment crucial to enabling devaluation. Who does devaluation hurt? The man on the street, the public, the normal guy. But Egypt's year-over-year -year inflation as of the end of January, well, look at this, but it's going down. Isn't that a good thing? Why do we need an overnight devaluation? Well, do you really think that it's the central bank rate? that is moderating that inflation? I don't think so. 
the devaluation brought the pound to a level around its value on the black market. And this is such an important point because we've talked about it so many times. When something is artificially suppressed in the real market, it's not suppressed. So if you look at the only physical gold market, I've shown you this many times, we are hitting new highs in certain areas and we're hitting current highs in many in all the other areas. But when you have something suppressed for a while, what does it do? When you when that suppression goes away, eh, I'm not good at this. I have to get a lot better at it. It shoots in a direction. Well, that's what we're seeing happen with spot gold right now because it broke out of a false resistance level. But when you're looking at currencies, they're going to be trading in two different markets. They're going to be trading in the real market, the black market, and in the managed market, which suppresses the price. But the reality is, is that at some point, one of the few guarantees I could give you, can't give you many, is that all assets move to their fundamental value. And in the black market that is not being suppressed, that's where you will likely find the true value. And this will be true of gold as well. And, and it is true of gold. But Egypt's currency crisis is killing young people's dreams. And this is critical because that's our future. That's all of our futures. Unfortunately, I'm pessimistic about Egypt's short-term economic future. I expect Egypt to avoid a full-blown meltdown because of the international financing that is coming in. But on the level of real day-to-day -day economy, tens of millions of people are living in poverty. Food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community and shelter. These are all the things that we need to sustain a reasonable standard of living. Otherwise, you are living in poverty. Get it done. And that's why really community is so important because I started right after 2008 because I knew the system died. And I also knew that food became the single biggest issue for most people during these transitions. Since that's when I became a farmer, that, that's not my nature to do it. But I want to make sure that I can feed as many people as possible. So avoid this by getting prepared and becoming part of a community because you just don't have the luxury of time like I had. I feel disappointed and helpless as there are many things I wanted to do in the near future that are completely smashed by the collapse, which came without previous notice or preparations. I don't want you to be saying that. I don't want anybody in the public to be saying that. That's why getting prepared is so important. It's been a long time in the making, so it doesn't come as much surprise. For the past few years, I've only accepted pay in hard currency. And what's currently happening is only another incentive to do so in the future. I mean, you have to think about it. But what's hard currency? This stuff? No, that's not hard currency. It's just devaluing slower than the Egyptian pound. Does that help you? Mm. So which hard currency are they accepting? Let's take a look. This is the US dollar to the Egyptian pound. And this is a two year chart, okay? Previous bouts of depreciation in March, 2022, October, 2022, and January 2023 are fo were followed by long stretches of stability. Forgive me on this one. I don't think three months, six months, or 14 months are very long. And is that real stability or is it manipulated stability? Right? Is this just what they want you to believe? Here's the purchasing power of the dollar that looks so strong there. And by the way, 
went up 213.8% against the Egyptian pound. This is just from 2008 to 2024, the purchasing power of the consumer dollar. The only difference between inflation and hyperinflation is the speed of that inflation. So you're looking at overnight versus since 2008 over a period of time. And this is heating up because there's no other options for the central banks. This is how they do it. So it might look like it's going up, but it's really the U.S. dollar going down more slowly than the Egyptian pound. I cannot stress that enough. I cannot stress that enough. Now, let's look at it in terms of the manipulated spot market. There's your three months, six months, 14 months. The Egyptian pound versus the fiat dollar was up 213.8%, but even the manipulated spot market was up 243%. So even the manipulated spot market outperformed. As they watched the value of their paychecks and savings evaporate over the past two years, the poor skimped on food, the middle class pulled their children out of good schools for cheaper or free ones, and even the better off went without vacation and meals out. Millions of people descended into poverty. This is what happens during these kinds of transitions and these overnight devaluations. They take something that has absolutely zero intrinsic value and they revalue it against gold money that is all intrinsic value. This is used in one place. This is used in every single sector of the global economy. This is a tweezer. This is a Swiss army knife. What do you want to go into this battle with? You have to ask yourself that. And if you have your food, water, energy, security, barter ability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter, you're not going to end up in abject poverty like millions of other people. But we can help them. And I've had a lot of people say, well, if they don't get it, that's too bad for them. That's not how I feel. What we're asking people to do, and I know it's frustrating for you because you see what's coming. And what we're asking people to do is have a paradigm shift. 